what's up, guys? Welcome back to another Commander video. We are here to finish it up for 2021. Been a long time, all month December, I was talking about the best cards of 2021. This is it. This is the video for the overall best new card we received in 2021. Of course, I want to thank you all for participating in these polls. As mentioned at the end of the previous video for end of the year awards, to determine the best new card, it will be yet another poll between the winners of each category. So the categories, if you need a reminder, removal, creature ETB, card draw, artifact, enchantment, planeswalker, and best new commander option. And while there are seven categories there, two of these cards ended up winning twice, and I will tell you which ones did. The Meat Hook Massacre won both removal and enchantment, and Esper Sentinel happened to be the best new source of card draw and the best new artifact. Best new creature ETB ended up going to Cultivator Colossus, Best New Planeswalker ended up going to T-Bolt Cosmic Imposter, which for the purpose of this video, we will also be including, of course, the flip side, Valky God of Lies. And Best New Commander option was Prosper Tomebound by a mile. So going over each one of these cards here, the Meat Hook Massacre from Midnight Hunt is one of the best enchantments that we've seen in black in a long time. And it's what I would consider to be an auto-include. If you are playing mono black, it definitely should be. Anytime you get to combine the aristocrat theme of draining life, gaining life when creatures die, with removal, you know, something to enable that trigger, you have something pretty strong. It's an X-cost card, so it does keep that CMC low if you're looking to keep your mana curve low. That's always something I think people pay attention to, especially if you're playing with cards like Ad Nauseam. The lower the CMC, typically the more competitive your deck is capable of being. I like Meat Hook Massacre because I think there is a concern with power creep in the game. And while I think there are some instances where that's true, Vanquish the Horde is great. I think White didn't need any more good board wipes, especially ones that in a commander game would only be two white mana. Meat Hook Massacre, I think, could be a situationally better answer than Massacre Worm. It's the same idea. You're destroying creatures and you're also forcing your opponents to lose life. If you're playing more of an enchantment deck, I think the Meat Hook Massacre would be more of an auto-include in that strategy. But if you're looking for something that's easier to abuse through graveyard reanimation, even blink, Massacre Worm definitely is something you would want a little bit more. And speaking of good ETBs, we have the category for best new ETB on a creature. Cultivator Colossus won that one. Not really hard to figure out why. Anytime you can keep your turn going, keep filling your hand, keep playing lands, you get landfall triggers in the process. This is what people enjoy. It's not practical. You're not going to want to play this specifically to ramp but you're going to play this because it could win you the game. It's an interesting win more card. It's not even so much that it's guaranteed to work for most decks. It's that people like playing the lottery. They like to see just how much they can get in return for playing something like this for seven mana. Same thing applies for every other powerful creature ETB. If you have a way of blinking this, it's even better. If you have a way of reanimating it, getting the ETB again, it's of course better. And as I said before, worst case scenario, let's say you don't win the lottery, you still have a creature that gets bigger for each land you have, and it has trample. So it's not a useless creature even if it doesn't give you the kind of return you're looking for. And the card that won best card draw in artifact for the year, Esper Sentinel. There's just something about a turn one setup play that I think appeals to everyone. And Esper Sentinel is more of an auto include than I think any other card we got in 2021. It's no secret White has struggled with card draw for the longest time. Esper Sentinel came in and gave you kind of a Mystic Remora for White. It's a lot less effective, of course, because it's just the first one they cast. So if they're able to pay that tax the first time, everything else they play that turn is tax free. However, I do like how you can manipulate that tax, just make Esper Sentinel's power greater. And I think a lot of decks are capable of doing that. And you're more likely to get that card draw. This card just ticks so many boxes. It is a good turn one setup for most decks in white, but it's also because of that a pretty good competitive card too. So no matter the format you're going to want to play this if you're an artifact deck in white, you should probably be playing this. I think it's going to be good across formats for a long time, and it follows the trend of the one mana powerful artifact that belongs in several decks. We had Best Planeswalker with T-Balt Cosmic Imposter. Again, this was done primarily focusing on the Planeswalker side, so Valky God of Lies is pretty much irrelevant here. I think T-Balt was appealing for a lot of reasons. People like the idea of stealing cards from your opponents, and T-Balt does that. And T-Balt does allow you to play from Exile, which does synergize with one of the most popular commanders of the year. I think a problem that a lot of people have with Planeswalkers, I have this problem too, is that they need to escape being just a generic Planeswalker with generic abilities. 
They need to do more than just let you scry or draw a card. They need to do more than just remove a creature here or there, create creature tokens. They need to specifically synergize with an up-and-coming strategy. Or they need to be so specific in what they do that they're not going to be mistaken. They're not going to be replaceable with several other Planeswalkers. So he is pretty expensive, but I think this T-Bald is definitely worth it. If we're talking about a four-player game with a lot of options, a lot of ways to steal cards, I totally understand why people love T-Bald as the best Planeswalker of 2021. And then the last category was Best New Commander Option. Prosper Tomebound. Synergizing with T-Bald, of course, anytime you're able to play from Exile, you get a treasure token. And his own trigger allows you to Exile cards that you can play the following turn. So you get an enabler, you get a way of keeping your turn going, you receive those treasure tokens so you get to play with the treasure token strategy. A lot of new is going on here with Prosper Tome Bound. But it's not so new that it's exclusive to Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, which I think is the main thing holding back a commander like Sephiroth. I don't know how many times we're going to be able to venture into the dungeon in the future, unless we get to return to the crossover with Dungeons and Dragons. But with Prosper, we already had a lot of cards that let you play from Exile. And this wasn't a previous strategy. People did not build a deck with that in mind, just all cards that let you play from Exile. So this is a first, and I think that's why it was so appealing. As I mentioned before, the runner-up for this category was Scythus, which was another value commander option. All that is is just a value engine. You play something, you get card draw. Prosper lets you exile cards that you get to play, you get to speed up your deck, you get treasure tokens, more mana to work with. Same idea, but this actually introduced something new. So what was the best new overall card we received in 2021? Final results are in. And with 6,000 votes, I want to thank you all first for participating. Cultivator Colossus at 3%, Prosper Tome Bound at 6%, Valky and T-Balt at 7%, The Meat Hook Massacre a runner up at 27%, but the overwhelming best card that won two previous categories, Esper Sentinel, 58%, over half the vote going towards best new card of 2021. It had a lot of momentum going into this final poll. It makes life easier. We're not talking about a specific strategy. You don't have to build around it, and I think that's why the Meat Hook Massacre is another popular card this year. You could fit it into a ton of black decks because it just makes your life easier. Esper Sentinel doesn't have to be built around. It just sits on the field and it could draw you some cards, or at the very least, tax your opponents. So it's no surprise to me that this is the best overall new card of 2021. Thank you all so much again for participating in these polls. It has been quite a ride, and I hope you all stay tuned for 2022. We got a lot of stuff coming up here. Got the new Kamigawa set. The channel itself is approaching 30,000 subscribers, so if you have not already, please consider doing so really helps me out. I enjoy making these videos for you guys. You are all awesome. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.